Well, let's take you live now to Nazareth for day two of the ANC politi uh, policy conference. And SABC uh, news anchor Vuyo Mvoko is there. Um, Vuyo, I was going to just comment on uh, President Kalema Modlanti's statements there. This is a notion um, that delegates are speaking in tongues and, you know, part of the objective is this pursuit of convergence. From your vantage point, is it likely that this so-called Tower of Babel will fall and this conference will unite, uh, will emerge united? Well, Iman, that's exactly what we've been asking. I mean, I've spoken to four provincial chairpersons uh, of uh, the ANC over the past one and a half days um, or so. They insist that people are talking friendly and that uh, conversations are going very well. Thank you very much. Everyone is focused on the issues that matter. Uh, but more importantly, it's, a, it's not about theory. It's not about rhetoric, but very real and practical solutions to both the ANC and the country's uh, problems. Of course, uh, the test will be on uh, uh, what we hear at the end uh, of it all. But I'm not alone here in our makeshift studio here at Nazarek. I am with Dr. Levi Ndo, uh, who is a member of our panel uh, of uh, analysts. Dr. Ndo, uh, as I was saying to uh, Iman just now, there is this Everyone seems to be positive that it's all going uh, according to plan, that everyone is following or is taken seriously, you know, the matching orders of their president uh, when he made those opening remarks um, uh, yesterday. Your sense? Well, everybody seemed to be happy and excited that um, as planned, the conference is running. Uh, my view is that um, something might be ringing in the minds of the delegates and the leadership of the ANC. Uh, the ANC is coming from the very difficult local government elections and um, overall they appear not to have performed very well. And uh, when you see a lot of um, municipalities being run by the opposition, and their own support base not having gone out to vote <laughs> it might be uh, uh, the reason why they seem to be saying that let's start to do things right let's focus on what is important and out of this conference they must be able to say something to ordinary south africans and it is the view that is expressed by everybody in the leadership of the anc and what we just have to wait for is the steps that they need to take in uh, um, ensuring that what has been agreed upon in here is actually being done practically and of course it must provide positive results. You know, Dr. Ndo, I mean, and this is uh, something uh, uh, Iman Rapete's question reminded me uh, of or took me back to. Only a couple of hours ago, uh, Paul Mashatile was speaking to journalists. And among the things, uh, when he was being asked about why they were not paying uh, their, their, their workers, or they were battling to pay their workers, part of the problems that the ANC has grown, you know, and with growth means more people were needed to actually, you know, take care of the affairs uh, of the organization, which had then had all sorts of, you know, unintended uh, 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 consequences. And in dealing with corruption, for example, they need to make sure that they have the right kind of cadre. And maybe at the beginning, especially after the unburning, the desire to have everyone on board or to, you know, uh, perhaps meant that they overlooked you know, the character of those people, whether they were involved in corruption or they joined the ANC for a personal gain and so on. And as I was listening to all of that, I started thinking, actually, when you look back at who the main culprits, you know, uh, are, in other words, the people who have hugely disappointed not only the ANC or members of the ANC, but the country, these are the people who are supposedly tried and tested. These are people who have been on Robben Island. These are people who have been in exile. These are people who were, you know, umkondo were uh, 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 guerrillas. And it's not the newcomers, you know, per se. So I, I'm coming to a thing that says, perhaps everyone assumes that everything is fine. 
precisely because no one is going, in other words, the conversations aren't going where they are supposed to go. That appears to be the challenge. Uh, the challenge in the ANC is that um, there is a general lack of discipline. Uh, whether it's old members or new members, there's a general lack of discipline in the ANC. Equal. But, but just frankness, you know? Yes. <laughs> you know, there is be, be, being able to talk frankly. Unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case. Um, most leaders of the ANC appears to be very busy with government activities and not focus on matters that negatively affect the party. But if the ANC has been able, as uh, indicated by um, uh, the chairperson of Limpopo, has been able to arrest the situation at its early stages, especially on matters of corruption, we wouldn't be where we are today if the ANC has, uh, would have been harsh on corrupt individuals we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't be having issues relating to state capture. Mm. It is because um, there is an element of leniency on those who are corrupt and uh, the general uh, membership of the ANC would not want to raise these issues frankly. And that is why they are actually here. And some of the issues that they are, going, they are discussing are matters relating to ending state capture and corruption. I would expect the ANC to say, to come with decisions that will actually prevent acts of corruption and state capture and followed by consequences on two broad ways. One, the ANC should be in the forefront of ensuring that those that are implicated in the state capture report are actually punished. The ANC should also be in the forefront of ensuring that tendencies of corruption and elements of state capture within its midst are actually arrested and dealt with. But for these people who are talking tough, uh, to be able to see a program like the one we're being told uh, is now being put together, for them to be able to succeed, they need to be elected into those positions of power. And that has always been the dilemma of many people that they will want to talk tough, but they need even the wrongdoers to give them the numbers so that they are then able to ascend. And uh, you've seen a lot of that where uh, people will get to be elected to like provincial chairperson or provincial secretary and so on, need the votes of the people they may not like. They need the votes and the money of the people, you know, <laughs> who are actually bringing their organization into disrepute to be able to ascend. And once they do that, and then you've got another layer coming in to fill, you know, the positions that they will have left. And it just continues. In other words, you get someone today who's tough talking, but was not able to act you know, on uh, uh, what they would have promised mm. because the next election is just around the corner. That appears to be one of the biggest challenges in the ANC again. And I think this is one of the issues that has brought into being the, the, the buying of membership in the ANC. When the ANC is celebrating that it has got millions of members, some of these members, the possibility is that they might not even know mm. that they are members because someone decided to join yeah. on their behalf. And that also talks to the challenge that uh, Paul Machatile was raising earlier on, to say that even though we are proud that we've got a lot of members, mm -hmm. the challenge is, the, is quality, and there has never been proper screening of the membership in the ANC. And equally so, the political education sector that is supposed to be conducted by the ANC is there, but it's not effective mm -hmm. because you still have members of the ANC who are aware that there is a policy conference going on now, but they wouldn't know any of the policies mm. that the ANC is actually uh, uh, dealing with. Mm. And those are the people who still have to go and conduct door-to-door -door campaigns without understanding the actual policies that the party has. And at the end of the day, as the journalists were saying uh, at that briefing, what you find is that conference after conference does diagnosis and they come up with resolutions, but at the end of the day, none of those resolutions get to make any difference.
this conference, in my view, must be able to develop uh, strategies for implementation, short, medium, and long-term uh, implementation uh, strategies. But equally, this conference should be able to give those that are given political responsibilities a time frame for reporting back. For an example, yesterday there was a discussion with uh, Dr. Gwen Ramukhupa, and one of the uh, colleagues asked a question that says, what is going on with NHI? And this is the matter that has been on the table for the past 12 years, mm -hmm. and there is a challenge with implementation. Last uh, conference, the ANC was quite uh, excited, and South Africans in general were excited that the ANC has adopted land expropriation without compensation. But where is that now? We are nowhere. So there <laughs> hence, is no implementation. Well, hence many people are skeptical even about uh, the plan uh, uh, for our electricity uh, crisis. That's why we're going to leave it. Um, uh, Iman, the ANC has said uh, it has given its uh, delegates up until midnight to make sure that they go through everything. All uh, 12 discussion documents uh, are going to go back to plenary uh, where they will resolve on them, come up with the recommendations that are going to go to the party's uh, elective conference uh, in December. They don't want to deal with any of those uh, tomorrow. They want things to be smooth and the president to uh, close uh, this uh, conference by lunch time. Iman? Well, at least we know they'll be well nourished. Uh, we all understand that dinner is in full swing and uh, things kick off again just after seven o'clock. Thank you very much for that update there from our studio in Nazareth.